I'm heading out for now. Goodbye, dear. Love you. Love you too. Ah, the Ruen Coffee House. Worst Java in Lamplight City, but there's no better place to overhear all the rumors and gossip in town. Just make sure you don't get too close to the other patrons. Discretion was never your forte. What a cheery reminder of everyone's impending death. That whole thing about the man in the black robe, complete lie, by the way. Nice seaside landscape. Definitely a stark contrast to the ambiance in here. Green's Sulfur Soap. Beautifies the complexion, and leaves you smelling fresh as a daisy. Talk about false advertising. I couldn't get a date for a week after using that stuff. Dr. Tennyson's Vigor Pills. Absolutely guaranteed to restore vitality, youth, and vigor, or your money back. For use by men only. These things seem to have had a spike in popularity recently. Dr. W.S. Sales Wonder Tonic. The best and safest medicine for both gentlemen and ladies. Prevents consumption, general weakness, feverishness, indigestion, constipation, diarrhea, loss of appetite, flatulence, and head pain. They should also mention that it prevents breathing, heartbeats, and being alive. Not much of a hurry to clean up in here, are they? Uh, best avoid that one. It looks like he might tip over at any moment. Reminds me of when I was alive. Ah, good times. Self-Portrait as a Desperate Man by B. Calvert. <laughs> a bit like looking in the mirror, isn't it, Miles? Professor Xander Colt Tit the Third's emulsified soporific, available at all discerning pharmacies. I really don't know why you think taking that rat piss every night is a good idea for him. Simon Banks, professional chimney sweep. Services start at two coppers per hour. Inquire at 305 Merrick Lane. I'm sure he's a lovable urchin, but thankfully, your chimney is clean. P.D. Preston's patented papier mache parambucat. Handsomely upholstered in silk, satin, or velvet, and hand-painted in the most artistic manner, as shown in engraving. I suppose if you and Adelaide ever finally decide to have children, something like this will come in handy. All that metal and tubing just to serve a hot cup of coffee? Seems like they have a little something for everyone in here. She's running back and forth at lightning speed. Clearly, she dips into the coffee supply. Give me an old-fashioned tea kettle any day. Just one of many patrons contributing to the oppressive thug in here. Judging by the sooty apron, this man is either a metal worker, a chimney sweep, or just really lazy when it comes to washing. The specialty house brews. These are definitely not coffee. A young woman holding a guitar. Completely the wrong way, I might add. If this is how they store their coffee beans, it's probably a better idea to ask for tea. Asleep at a coffee house. One of life's little ironies. If it isn't my old friend, up to no good. Hello, Fordham. It's good to see you. How did you get them to let you in here? It's rather simple, really. The owner and I have an understanding. He pretends women are allowed in coffee houses, and I don't report his unsavory business practices to Chief Snelling. Sounds like a good deal. What sort of unsavory business practices are we talking about? Oh, we haven't got time to get into that now. But take some advice. Don't order anything that isn't water. I got your message. What's going on? It's time for you to join the big boys again, Fordham. Your days of finding lost cats are over. So stop teasing me and tell me what it is already. Do you know Madame Laura Dupre? Laura Dupre? She's one of those Gascon Grand Dames, isn't she? That's right. I'm surprised you've heard of her. I didn't think you cared about those types of people. I don't, but Adelaide has several of them as clients. 
She gets paid to pretend to care about their lives, and I get to hear the sordid details. Madame Dupre died the day before yesterday. Her funeral was held this morning. My condolences. But halfway through the service, the mourners heard a loud knocking coming from inside her coffin. She wasn't dead? Apparently not. Nearly interred alive, although her doctor swears she had no pulse. Dupre's son Andrew was quick to suspect foul play. He accused a man named Albert Martin, and the police arrested him. So where do I come in? Sounds like the case has already been solved. I strongly suspect that Martin is innocent, especially considering the talk of him having used black magic on Dupre. The police feel they have enough evidence to convict, so they're not bothering to investigate any further. You're going to look into it and see if I'm right. Then find the person who was really behind this. Why not just ask Madame Dupre herself? She hasn't spoken since the ordeal. Apparently, she's been catatonic since they pulled her out of the coffin. How unfortunate. If you'd like to question Mr. Martin, he's being held at the Bow Street Jail. Or you could take a look around his house. It's at 451 Compton Street in Worcester. And the Dupre home? That's at Emmeline and Comtesse, right across from the old Angeline convent. It's also possible you might run into the police during your investigation, since they're technically still on the case. Thanks for the warning. Was there anything you wanted to talk about before you get started? Yes, actually. I had a couple of questions. Let's hear them, then. How are things going with you? Work is hectic as usual, and I'm spending my day off in here. But considering my home life is still a shambles, maybe this is the best place to be. I'm truly sorry about that. Don't be ridiculous. If it hadn't been for you, I'd still be chained to that philandering bastard. It hasn't been easy, but I'm much better off this way. Trust me. Anyway, work gives me something to focus on. I'm sure you can relate to that. Yes, and I'm grateful to you for getting me these case leads. I know you're taking a risk to do it. It's the least I can do. How about you? How's Adelaide? She's fine. Although the things between us could be improved, if I'm being honest. The less said about it right now, the better, I think. I'm sorry to hear that. You can talk to me about it if you need to, although I'm probably not the best person to ask for relationship advice. Don't suppose there have been any developments regarding Bill's murder? Unfortunately not. The department hasn't exactly been focusing on that case as a priority. The general attitude is that it was an accident. Bill died an honorable death in the line of duty. Would have been nice if they bothered saying that at the funeral. And of course there are still those who blame you for his death, Snelling being the first and foremost. But the man who killed him is still out there. Yes, I know, but it looks like you're on your own if you want to find him. My hands are tied. I can only ask around so much before the higher-ups get suspicious. Just don't give up. New Britannia may be a big city, but the criminal world is surprisingly close-knit. If you find any connections or leads during your other cases, be sure and let me know. I'll do the same if I find anything out. See, she has a priority straight. You could learn a lot from up there. I wanted to go over the case with you. Okay, what have you got? What do you know about Madame Dupre? Only what I've read about her in the paper. She's been married thrice, which I can empathize with, and she's extremely rich, which I can't. What makes you think this Martin fellow is innocent? The fact that the only evidence is the word of Dupre's son. I've seen this sort of thing thousands of times, and I'm sure you did too. They're just looking for a scapegoat. You're the only person I know who can put it right. Upton's intentions are noble, but she has to realize this is just a drop in the ocean. That's enough about the case for now. Okay. That's it, I think. Then you'd better get back to it. Well, I'm not entirely sure how this is going to help you find the flower shop burglar, but I suppose freeing an innocent man is a worthy diversion. Is that you? You look like something the cat spat up. Hello, Giles. It's lovely to see you, too.
What brings you around the jail? I thought you'd quit being a detective. I'm looking to speak with Mr. Albert Martin. Oh, I see. Well, that's him in the first cell there. I'd say what needs saying as quick as you can, though. He's headed for the gallows in the morning. What? Already? But what about a trial? No trial necessary when there's black magic involved. This little half-breed's already sealed his fate. Such a charming fellow, isn't he? Mr. Martin? Who are you? My lawyer? No, I'm actually here to help you. The name's Miles Fordham. I'm a private investigator. H how are you going to help me? I'm looking into the attack on Madame Dupre. I believe you're innocent. Oh, thank heaven. That's, that's music to my ears. Would you mind answering a few questions for me? Friend, if it means saving me from the noose, I'll tell you nothing less than God's truth. Interesting choice of phrase for someone accused of using black magic. What can you tell me about Madame Dupre? What's to tell? She's a twisted, evil woman who got what was coming to her. Whoever attacked her deserves some sort of reward for the service they're doing the community. So it wasn't you, then? No. I'm innocent, Mr. Fordham. You have to believe me. I'm afraid you're not making that very easy right now, Mr. Martin. Do you know anything about the circumstances of Madame Dupre's supposed death? No, I had nothing to do with it. Then why did her son accuse you? Probably because he's just as ignorant as she is. What I meant was, how did her son know to accuse you? Have you had any contact with the family before? Yes, you could say that. Uh-oh, that gleam in his eye says it all. You see, I'm involved with Dupre's daughter, Juliette Montgomery. Dupre doesn't like that one bit. She, uh, she even threatened me once. Is that right? Yes. She might have everyone else fooled, but that woman is the devil incarnate. I, I can't understand how something so heartless and cruel could have spawned someone as pure and oh, loving as my dear Juliet. He's not really helping his case much, is he? Tell me about Juliet. She's wonderful. Such a beautiful, kind soul. She hasn't come to see me yet, but I'm sure that's because of all the confusion in the last few days. Juliet wouldn't believe for a second that I would be capable of harming her mother. I'm sure of it. How did you two get involved? We met at the university. Your classmates? <laughs> Hardly. They wouldn't allow someone like me to enroll there. Juliet studies botany. I work as an assistant in the greenhouse. We started talking, and oh, she actually treated me like a, a person. To everyone else, I was just the boy who fetched the test tubes. But Juliet actually wanted to hear what I had to say. Had the same taste in books and art. Didn't just treat me like some piece of gardening equipment. She even shared some of her notes with me after I told her I was interested in botany as well. From there, things just got better. I don't expect you to understand or approve, but that's how it happened. Oh, you'd be surprised. It doesn't sound too different to how my wife and I got together. Except I was a detective and she was a singer at a bar. And she's... Yes, Mr. Martin. Anyway, back to the matter at hand. How often is Juliet in the greenhouse? Every weekday, but I doubt she's there now. She's probably trying to find out where I am and working to have me released. Somehow, I wouldn't bet on that. How did you end up in here? I was just minding my own business at home when the police showed up with no warning. They made some outrageous claims about me putting some sort of curse on Madame Dupre. The next thing I knew, I was here. Oh, Mama must be beside herself with worry. I just hope she's all right. What does your mother do, Mr. Martin? Uh, she helps people. I was hoping you'd be just a bit more specific. Uh, she provides spiritual help to those who seek guidance. She's a spiritualist. Mm, not quite. She's more like, how can I explain it? Uh, you know how a priest holds mass to spread the word of God to the people? My mother holds services and calls on the spirits to walk among us, providing healing and guidance. So she's a religious leader? If you want to give her that title, it would be the most appropriate. And does this religion of yours have a name? 
you'd probably know it as voodoo, but it doesn't mean what you think it does. People are so quick to judge and portray us as evil when they have no idea. So you practice voodoo, do you? Are you making fun of me, Mr. Fordham? No, of course not. Apologies if it seemed as though I was. It's just that the police are convinced that black magic was involved in Madame Dupre's apparent death. That's because that idiot son of hers knew about my mother, and like all bigoted fools, assumed that we're involved in devil worship in the black arts. But I can assure you that this is most certainly not the case, Mr. Fordham. Of course. I didn't mean to imply. Just... Uh, just forget it. That's all for now. Oh, wait. Uh, before you go, would you do me a favor? Would you go see my mother at our house and give her a message? You're at 451 Compton Street, right? Yes, that's right. Could you tell her I said St. Rock's dog is barking? I suppose I could do that, yes. Oh, thank you. Whatever happened to a simple I love you? Ah, Compton Street. We're not too far from Restaurant Row. When's the last time you ate, anyway? Please, let's not add eating to the list of things to nag me about. Bon Bon's Restaurant. I never got a chance to go there. But I hear their deviled eggs are simply to die for. Considering how many eating establishments are in this neighborhood, the butcher picked a fantastic spot to set up shop. I do notice a distinct lack of stray cats in this neighborhood, though. Considering how many eating establishments are in this neighborhood, the but I do... One of Atwood's re-election posters, sorely lacking a mustache. Go on, Miles. Fix this grievous injustice. Not now, Bill. There are more important things to worry about. Spoil sport. I'm glad that Coulson still uses horses. I don't trust the new self-driving cabs. I'm sorry, I have no time for visitors today. You're Albert Martin's mother, aren't you? Who are you? Miles Fordham. I spoke with Albert, and he told me to give you a message. He said to tell you that St. Rock's dog is barking. Oh, I see. That's good, that's very good. You better come in, Mr. Fordham. Standing on the street just won't do. Welcome to my home, Mr. Fordham. I am Sabine Martin. I hope you understand that Albert has nothing to do with this awful business. Would you care for some tea? Well, her tune certainly changed when you gave her that message. I wonder what it meant. No, thank you, ma'am. I won't be staying long. The Virgin Mary? I must admit she was the last person I was expecting to see in here. A rather unremarkable book collection, I'm sorry to say. That statue, on the other hand, gives me the willies. A rather... For all we know, that rider is some sort of demon. He looks like he's having a good time, at least. That pattern resembles a flower. Too bad it isn't an Easter lily. Interesting. Those pots look as though they've been wrapped in tobacco leaves. It's some old man with a dog standing at the center of a crossroads. If that's meant to have any sort of significance, it's completely lost on me. I'm afraid that room is private, Mr. Fordham. I must respectfully ask you to not go in there. Of course. My apologies. I've got a few questions for you, Mrs. Martin. I'll try to answer them the best I can. Do you think your son is capable of doing what he stands accused of? Never. Albert wouldn't harm a fly. That's what the mothers always say. Why don't you tell me a bit more about him then? He started working at the university laboratory a few years ago. I was so proud of him. 
The university is quite selective, you know. The same for its staff as well as its students. Yes, I've gotten that impression. I always told Albert to be careful around those high society types, but that one always thinks with his heart first. Is she sure that's the correct body part? He's all the family I have, Mr. Fordham. Do you know anything about Madame Laura Dupre? I never met her in person, but I know plenty about her. Like what? Nothing fit for a polite conversation, Mr. Fordham. But I can tell you this. Laura Dupre has far more enemies than she lets on. Does that include you or your son? It most certainly does not. What do you know about Juliet, Madame Dupre's daughter? I know Albert was smitten with her. No matter that I told him to be very careful around her kind. Those rich Creole families don't care much for people like us. To them, we're just a help. But from his telling, Juliet sounded to be a decent soul. It's a shame the same can't be said for her kin. If you'll indulge my curiosity, what exactly was the meaning of Albert's message? Saint Rock is the patron saint of dogs, as well as the falsely accused. If he sent the message along with you, it means he trusts you, and that I should too. Oh, I see. Perhaps you were hoping for something more? That's just the way of mysteries, isn't it? How do you mean? The thrill of the unknown is always more exciting than the truth. Mystery makes life a little more interesting. True, but if mysteries were really better unsolved, I wouldn't have a job. What exactly is it you do, Mrs. Martin? I provide services to the public. A delightfully vague answer if there ever was one. Give me something a bit more specific, please. I'm a mambo a Subway. That means I'm what you call a voodoo queen. I'd give you a detailed explanation of the responsibilities and duties of the role, but your time would be better spent clearing my son's name. Can you tell me a bit more about your religious practices? What I can tell you is that the ignorant whites in this city are afraid of us for no reason. Voodoo is not about black magic or dark spells or turning people into the living dead. It's about healing and life. Naturally, there are misguided souls who may try to use it for ill purposes, but I am not one of those. Sounds like you hit a sore spot. Might be a good idea to stop pressing her on this angle. I think I'll take you up on your offer for tea, after all. All right, Mr. Fordham. You'll have to give me a few minutes to heat up the kettle. I'll be back shortly. Amazing! Even more voodoo stuff back there! Why would she keep these particular items hidden from view? Good question. They obviously have some importance to her. I'd suggest asking, but I don't know if that's the best idea given how sensitive she seems to be about the subject. The tea should be ready in a few minutes, Mr. Fordham. You can help yourself once it's done. You're very kind, Mrs. Martin. Aren't you going to have your tea, Mr. Fordham? I'm afraid I just remembered something important I need to look into. Perhaps later. Suit yourself. Nothing else to ask him right now. He hasn't got much time left. Best not to waste it. You are aware this is private property, sir? Yes, I'm Miles Fordham, private investigator. I'm looking into the incident involving Madame Dupre. I assume this is she? You assume correctly, Mr. Fordham. My apologies, but I thought the police had already made an arrest. That's right, but there's still some doubt as to the man's guilt. May I ask your name, sir? I am Dr. Fellows, Madame Dupre's private physician. I'm afraid she is in no state to be answering questions at present. Are any other members of the family home? Her son, Mr. Montgomery, is in the entrance hall. I had to give him a mild sedative to settle his nerves, but he should be all right to converse. Then if you don't mind, I'll have a look around. With her vast sums of wealth, Madame Dupre could probably feed a starving family for the next 30 years. Instead, 
She uses the money to keep her hedges trimmed. This fountain probably looked nicer when it was working, but right now it's just a breeding ground for mosquitoes. Her eyes are glazed over and she's got a vacant, expressionless stare. She seems completely oblivious to her surroundings. If we didn't know she'd been buried alive, I'd say she was just exhibiting the typical symptoms of your average rich person. Doctor, may I ask you a few questions? Please be my guest. Tell me about Madame Dupre. She is a great woman and a pillar of the community. I cannot imagine why something like this could happen to her or how someone could be capable of such a barbaric feat. Though this ordeal has been terrible, I am confident she will overcome. The power of her physical constitution is surpassed only by her strength of character. You think he'd say the same things if he wasn't on her payroll? I highly doubt it. What were the circumstances surrounding Madame Dupre's supposed death? Her son, Andrew, sent for me a few days ago after finding her unconscious and unresponsive. As I was unable to detect a pulse or breath, I had no other recourse but to declare her deceased. I judged that Madame Dupre had likely suffered a sudden cardiac arrest. It was most shocking to be proven wrong at a funeral. <laughs> I can imagine. Where was the funeral held, by the way? St. Denis Cemetery. Madame Dupre wished to be interred in the tomb of a father's family, name of Chesterton. Perhaps I'll go have a look. How long have you been Madame Dupre's private physician? Five years, and I've been practicing medicine for the past 30. I still spend a couple of days a week treating patients at Riverview Asylum. Oh, good. Maybe if you're lucky, he could be your doctor someday. 30 years is quite a long time. You must have seen some incredible advances in the field of medicine. I have, yes. I can only wonder how things will change with all this talk of ethericity. There's speculation it can be used to restore necrotic tissue and instantly heal broken bones, among other things. If you ask me, a good bloodletting will never go out of fashion. Did you examine Madame Dupre after she reanimated? Of course. Physically, she appeared to be in fine health, aside from minor dehydration. I found no marks or bruising on her body. Mentally is a different story, however. She's remained in an unresponsive state ever since. Do you have any opinions on what caused Madame Dupre to appear dead? The most likely cause I can imagine is some sort of poison or toxin. What leads you to believe Madame Dupre was poisoned? The symptoms she experienced were consistent with prior cases of poisoning I've studied. And didn't the young man arrested have ties to some kind of black magic cult? There have been reported cases of these practitioners using poisons to make people appear dead, then commanding them to do their bidding. I recall reading about a man in the West Indies who was given tetrodotoxin, that's the toxic secretion from a pufferfish, declared dead and buried. He appeared alive in his village some 20 years later. Doesn't that seem a bit far-fetched to you, Doctor? Facts are facts, Mr. Fordham. Surely someone in your line of work can appreciate that. Those are all the questions I've got for now. I hope I answered them adequately. Oh, hello. Are you the new servant? No, I'm Miles Fordham. I'm a private investigator looking into your mother's attempted murder. How did you know I was her son? Oh, of course. You must have sensed it with your detective's intuition. I should have guessed by that giant head of yours. <laughs> Are you feeling all right, Mr. Montgomery? Yes, yes, I'm fine. Much better than when those pesky police officers were snooping around earlier. But I like you, Mr. Fordham. I can already tell you're not like them. Not like them at all. Please, call me Andrew. Yes, well, I'll have a look around, and I may need to ask you some questions. Do you think you can handle that? I can. In fact, I really, really look forward to it. If the good doctor gave him a mild sedative, I'd hate to see what the stuff you take would have done to him. It 
beautiful parrot. Must have cost the Duprez a cool copper. Who's a pretty bird? Uh, Ray's a pretty bird. Polly want a cracker? No, thank you. Uh, Pieces of eight? Bye, matey. Uh, so long, birdie. Uh, Bye-bye. Do you suppose that's for the bird? Or perhaps so the Dupre family members can get a good look at themselves on the way out of the house. Dupre looks like she's holding on to that poor bastard for dear life. I have some questions for you. Oh, goody. What can you tell me about Madame Dupre? She came back from the dead. I couldn't believe it. My mother resurrected just like Jesus. Uh, yes. I heard you're the one who accused Mr. Martin of the crime. Oh, no, I already talked to the police about that. I don't want to think about it right now. How do you typically spend your days, Mr. Montgomery? What are your interests? Oh, a little of this and a little of that. Nothing as exciting as what you do, I'm sure. Ooh, tell me, do most bad people start crying when you catch them? I'll bet it's a laugh riot to see them sobbing away. <laughs> No, Mr. Montgomery, most of them don't. Well, that's a real shame, isn't it? What can you tell me about your sister, Juliet? I'm reminded of a famous quote, Mr. Fordham. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Let us part on good terms and avoid the subject altogether, please. That's a rather exotic bird you've got. I like looking at him. He has such pretty colors, doesn't he? That he does. You know... I've always wondered what he might taste like. Is that bad, do you think? I really couldn't say, Mr. Montgomery. Thanks for your time. No, thank you for yours. This is ridiculous. He won't be of any use in this state. If it takes him as long to snap out of it as it takes you, we'll be waiting around here until noontime tomorrow. There has to be a way to bring him back to his senses. Maybe that quack outside knows something of use. This is always my favorite part of detective work. Nothing inside but a bunch of extra doilies. Ugh, how disappointing. Maybe you should steal one, just to spite Madame Dupre for not giving us any good clues. No, Bill. You're no fun, Miles. A horrible little porcelain figurine. Madame Dupre didn't strike me as the type to play with dolls. Ah, the Gascon docks. The artist definitely took some liberties. You can't see a single person getting stabbed. Nice bouquet of roses. Although it would make things much easier if they were Easter lilies. If only. Must be nice being able to afford keeping your oil lamps lit during the daytime. A fainting couch. You know, I always wanted one of these, but I never fainted enough to justify buying one. A much younger Madame Dupre. I suppose that's a nice alternative to a mirror. One of those melodramatic romances. I read it a while back, and I couldn't tell you a thing about it. Now that one sounds interesting. I was always a fan of Bedletter's short stories doesn't appear to be very brief if there's two volumes of it. I wonder if anyone outside the family would find this even remotely interesting. Choice and consequence. <laughs> Who in their right mind would write a book about that? I don't even want to know what that one's about. I read that one last year. If you ever wanted to know the intimate details of a buffalo's anatomy, I highly recommend it. Thank you. 
it would appear that Madame Dupre was taking music lessons. Her current predicament has probably put an end to that venture, though. Hmm. Seems Madame Dupre fancies herself a poet. was life-changing. For once in my life, I'm completely speechless. Then perhaps I should take this with me and read it more often. Nah. That's an old uniform, from the turn of the century by the look of it. This must be Madame Dupre's first husband. Kind of strange that she'd still keep his portrait in the bedroom. Let's see if there's anything in these drawers. Damn. Nothing but personal effects and more stationery. Don't forget the first rule of detective work. If there's nothing useful inside, check underneath and between. Ah, yes, of course. Thanks for the reminder. Uh-huh, now this is intriguing. You've got some huge bags under your eyes, Miles. Reminds me of the case we had on that strange train. Uh, don't remind me. Juliet really likes plants and flowers, doesn't she? I've never seen so many beauty products together in one place. Doesn't look like they get used much, though. Locked. I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. Nice little cottage. Looks like it would make a nice cozy spot to retire. If I hadn't already retired from life, that is. Let's have a look through these papers. Aha, what's this? So, Juliet is renting a room in the Chum. That's certainly interesting. I can't wait to see what sort of dirty secrets she's got hidden away in there. Empty. How unusual. Not to mention disappointing. Well, someone's fancy. I never like these types of beds much. They feel too claustrophobic. I always thought they had a certain appeal myself. Yes, you would think that about a bed that lets you shut out the rest of the world. Goodness, someone went overboard with the flowers. This brings back some memories, doesn't it? Ones I'd rather forget. These should be useful. What in the ether is that thing supposed to be? Actually, I'd rather not know. Is this really the best that medical science has to offer? A gentle reminder that everyone's time is slowly running out. Decadent. Dr. Tennyson's Vigor Pills. These would make a sloth act like a hummingbird. Hmm, the bottle is empty.
I can only wonder what sort of potions Andrew concocts in this thing. The science of pharmacology. I'm sure it's riveting stuff. It looks as though this folded piece of paper is being used as a bookmark. I hope remembering what page they were on wasn't too important. Looks like it's a letter for Andrew. Must be a nice place to sit and listen to music. Why would anyone need so many flowers in one room? Perhaps it's to mask the odors of those chemicals on the workstation. Hmm. Could be. Why would any? Perhaps. Hmm. Oh, look! It's one of those new audio cylindrographs. I can't quite wrap my head around how they can manage to get sound out of a wax cylinder. I don't know much about art, but I see Madame Dupre and I at least have similar tastes. Certainly no shortage of bowls or food preparation items around here. Some kind of water dispensing device, maybe? I was never very good at finding my way around the kitchen. Yeah, it looks like gumbo's on the menu tonight. I wonder how it compares with Upton's special recipe. Uh, it's times like these make me wish I could still eat. Judging by the amount of food this family probably eats, washing the dishes must take forever. Looks like the type of spices you'd use in a stew, most likely paprika or turmeric. Nice variety of reds and oranges. Pardon me, miss. What? Who are you? I'm Miles Fordham. I'm investigating the attempted murder of Madame Dupre. Oh, I'm sorry, sir, but I'm very busy. I, I can't help you. Do you know anything about what happened to Madame Dupre? No, I don't. Please leave me to my work. I shouldn't be talking to you. All right, I'm going. I have some questions for you. Oh, goody. I found this bottle of pills upstairs. Are they yours? Yes. I take those from time to time when I'm feeling tired. You seem to be out. Hmm, yes. That is a pity. <laughs> Where do you usually acquire them? Oh, they're available by mail order only. I'll have to remember to request some later. Thanks for your time. No, thank you for yours. Doctor, may I ask you a few questions? Please be my guest. May I ask exactly what kind of sedative you gave Andrew? A simple tincture of laudanum. It's what I give all my nervous patients. He seems a bit out of sorts. Hot meat kettle. It can have that effect, but it usually wears off in half a day or so. Is there a way to bring him out of his condition sooner? A stimulant would have the opposite effect, but I wouldn't recommend mixing the two. It could have potentially harmful effects on his heart. 
Oh, of course. I wasn't planning on doing anything of the sort. I was just curious. It's cute how you act like you have no experience in these matters. It's almost convincing. Those are all the questions I've got for now. I hope I answered them adequately. Nothing else to ask you. 